Jazakallah khair, uh, Ali. What is, should be the expectation of the community for the student who graduates and comes back to his community? If there should be any expectation at all? And, you know, how should the student fulfill that? And how should the community receive that? It's a complex question. First, I want to <coughs> ask Allah to allow us all to die without, without our debts being paid. I mean, I mean um, and for, for the community to excuse the students' knowledge and imams, there's many imams in the crowd that I, that I see, that I hear. Let me just say, before Ali, before you continue, forgive us. We're not perfect. I've said some things that were controversial. Mufti Abu Osama in the years that he has been involved in the communities. And unfortunately, sometimes we don't understand the, the, the power of our words or the, how much influence we really have. Sometimes we underestimate our stardom. And we don't realize how much we impact lives of people, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But you guys have to understand that we're human. Sometimes you elevate us to a level that is haram for you to do. You make it so like we're not even allowed to make mistakes. We're not even allowed to be human. And it's unfair. Because then that means that your expectations of us are unrealistic. It's almost like the Quraysh said about the Prophet, you know, how could he be a Prophet he eats food and he walks in the marketplace. It's like, well, am I not a human being? Am I not supposed to eat food? Am I not supposed to go shopping in the marketplace? It's unrealistic. And Allah retorted with, we have never sent a messenger before. Except, except they used to eat food and walk in the marketplace. The expectations sometimes that you guys have of people such as us in these positions are unrealistic and it's unfair. Sometimes you function with a sense of entitlement as if we owe you. You send a message on a Facebook page, you send a message on a Twitter page, and then when they don't respond, it's like, oh, I sent you a message two days ago, you didn't respond. Well, I didn't know responding to you was a priority in my life. I'm sorry. I didn't know responding to you was a priority in my life. As if I don't have a wife or wives, I don't have children. You know how many children I have? I have 12 children. You understand? Like, you think about that for a minute. If I never responded to anybody's email, I'm justified. Because at least I'm taking care of mine and I don't ever have to worry about, worry about you sending me an email about my kids. Inshallah, bismillah, I, I pray, <laughs> Allahumma. <laughs> but, you know, it's a sense of entitlement and it's not fair. You have sisters, like you don't even, we don't even want to open that door. Sometimes sisters, oh, I want to marry him. But what makes you think I want to marry you? You have a sense of entitlement that you feel like, oh, mashallah, he inspired me. So you want to marry me because I inspired you? Like, really? So every time a man inspires you, you want to marry them? I mean, think about the mentality. And then you subject imams, we're human beings. Yusuf, alayhi salam, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa illa tasrif anni kaydahunna asbu ilayhinna. That if you do not turn the plot of these women away from me, I might incline, I'm a man. I may incline. And then I'll be amongst the ignorant. We're humans. You send a message and you know that it's haram. Instead of you sitting, oh, I'm just wondering, brother, are you looking for marriage? Stop for a long. And then we begin this conversation, and in the moment you realize that I'm interested in somebody else instead of you, then you want to take screenshots of my conversation and post it on the internet. Oh, he was talking to me and it was haram anyway. But you're exposing yourself because you knew it was haram. And then we'll say, well, he's a student of knowledge, he should know better. 
Now I'm a human being and you knew that and you should know better. You took advantage of my vulnerability. And I'm, you know what I mean? I'm not necessarily a fan of Norman Ali Khan, and pretty much you all are aware of what's happening. But this is exactly what happens. That man was nothing more than a human being, and he was exploited. And people will say, "Well, he's he's an imam, he's a student, and he should know better." But then now you're taking the responsibility off yourself because you're saying basically, "I can do whatever I want to do." And because he's a student of knowledge, he should obey and live by the rules and laws that he knows. And you put it back on the person without taking any responsibility for yourself. And these are unrealistic expectations. Stop raising students of knowledge to the status of superstardom. We are not superstars. As a matter of fact, we don't even want to be doing what we're doing. I didn't ask for this. Nobody up here asked for this. This was put into our laps. There's some people who are born in greatness, some people who develop greatness, and then there's some people who greatness is just put in their laps, and they got to deal with that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَبَلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ That we will test you with good and evil. Good is a fitna as well. Being a student of knowledge is a fitna. Understand. So your expectations, brothers and sisters, has to be realistic. Stop. Aisha radiallahu she said, umirna an nunazil nas manazilahum. We have been commanded to put everyone in their proper place. To give someone a status that does not belong to them is wrong. And the expectation of the student of knowledge should be, as Abu Saba mentioned, should be realistic. 